Hello. Oh, I can't even speak. Hello and welcome to this live Q&A. In this, in this stream today, I really wanted to dig deep and talk more about getting comfortable uh, on camera or on your live stream. And it's all good and well and, and easy for, for people like me to come in and go, oh, you just sit and do it. And the more you do it, the more comfortable you'll get. And, and that's great if you've had hundreds, if not, you know, I'm, I'm getting up to the thousands of live streams, but still in the hundreds uh, of regular weekly live streams where I've been able to get into the habit of of doing this, of actually, you know, having these live streams under my belt. So I wanted to talk to you about some of the things that you can do that isn't that, that's not having hundreds of live streams under your belt before you're comfortable. Because I can tell you right now that in this new series of live streams, I'm nervous before I start. Whereas on my other channel, it's like a comfortable old shoe. So there's always something new, always something different. So these are techniques to help you push through those and to actually just get in and do it. Good morning to Hello Trish. Uh, Trish does stuff. Sorry, Hello Trish. Um, how are you going? Great to see you. Thank you for your comment over on the productivity stream this week. Hello, amazing yacht destinations. It's great to see you. And Leanne, it's so good to see you. Michael, Michael, always jumping in with the hugs. It's good to see. And Andrew Can is here. Hey, Andrew, how are you going? You've had a really, really big weekend. But those of you that don't know, StreamYard hit a hundred thousand subscribers in Nick Nimmin or during Nick Nimmin's stream this uh, this weekend or Saturday Saturday morning. I'm in a different time zone, so my brain does a little hiccup when I've got to do the working out of um, time zones. But it's great to see you, Andrew. I have my water. I'm keeping hydrated. Um, good morning, Game Widows. How are you going? So. The first suggestion that I have for getting comfortable in a live stream is actually getting comfortable in the software that you're going to be using. When you're live streaming, your brain is doing 14 things at once. And as humans, our brains don't like to do that. They, they like to focus on one or two things and do them really well. But focusing on a ton of different things, it, it, was, it makes it trickier it makes it more difficult it makes it harder to focus and my brain um, how my brain works and I know everyone's is a little bit different is if I see things moving off the screen I'm instantly like uh, it's like full-on squirrel shiny thing you know all those sorts of things so getting really comfortable in the software that you're using so today I'm streaming with StreamYard I have um, I'm using one of their cool banana new um, video backgrounds which the movement in that I'm still adjusting to so for me it's like oh that's moving oh it's supposed to be that's okay that's okay okay so the advantage with with using something like StreamYard or StreamYard in particular is that you have the opportunity to click record instead of go live so you can actually sit down get comfortable um working in the screen that you'll be using while you're live so i can you know click on the things see what they do mess around check my audio so when you click record you can have like do like a little five minute or two minute thing just to double check a your sound is good b that your lighting's good that you're not getting massive reflections in your glasses where can i move my head to that's safe nope not there down there there we go so you can really see just that um, what works and what doesn't work by just practicing and then you get to this point where you get to just relax into the software so we've got more people jumping in um, Jerry Papandrea is here hey Jerry great to see you um, uh, and, and everyone else is chatting the moving background is trippy yet yeah, cool yeah, it is a little. I kind of love them a lot. So so I've created in StreamYard, you can create your own custom. And the the cropped version that StreamYard do, the solo layout cropped version was just is a little too much. It's a little too much. So I created like a smaller crop. 
Um, there's some great videos over on the StreamYard channel that shows you how to do your custom uh, layouts, which I, I'm loving. I, and I can't wait to see more what, more what StreamYard are doing. Um, and later on this morning, they'll be doing their regular town hall. This morning, this evening for most of you. Um, you see no mallards. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yep. Yep. Uh, you were saying that, that the, um, that the multiple screens. Yeah. So, um, I was using a different software for that, that particular stream so that I can bring in different camera angles. So I was using Ecamm, um, so that I could bring in all the, I had three different camera angles, um, and going from there, um, Whereas with StreamYard, I am limited to two. Uh, it's getting a lot better. When I first started using StreamYard, I was limited to one. So being able to uh, bring in extra screens is super useful in some of my more crafting endeavors. Streams like this, one or two screens, perfectly fine, perfectly useful. Oh uh, yeah, custom layouts are a total game changer. I agree with you. Um, and I, 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 it's now I'm limited to my imagination and cameras, so yeah. Uh, Trish, no, I'm not using a green screen. This is my little studio. Uh, I can touch all my things. These are my books. There's my crochet blanket that I'm working on in the live streams. This is not a green screen. This is this is my studio. Um, now, I will let you in on a secret. That brick wall is not a real brick wall, okay? This room is just a bedroom, painted walls. So um, I actually have these sticky taped up with um, gaff tape and painter's tape. They're just $10 photographic backdrops that I've stuck to the wall and if I could easily zoom out which I can't um, I would show you but I can't do that in this software so no green screen for me um, green screens are a, a whole nother kettle of fish if you want to get into green screens you need to have a little bit of um, space between yourself and the green screen and this room is very narrow so um, I don't have enough separation between me and the green screen to be able to light the screen properly for a good green screen. So I tend not to use them just because of the space I'm in. Um, so can one use OBS Ecamm as input uh, as an input and still have three angles? Absolutely. You can use both OBS and Ecamm as a virtual camera input into StreamYard. So for many years I did OBS into StreamYard so that I could still have my multi cameras uh, for my for my crafting videos. Um, and, and you can bring that in. So when you're choosing your settings and your camera, you can choose the virtual camera of your choice. You can't bring audio in that in that way. You need to route your audio through StreamYard only. Um, but you can absolutely bring in the virtual cameras going that way. A uh, good hello, good evening from uh, from New Mexico. Well, good morning from the future in, in Australia. Um, so Trisha says that Trisha says she, I work with the camera facing down. That is what is confusing the most. So Trish, if you go and check on the Fiberific channel, not on a productivity stream, I know you checked out a productivity stream this week. If you go and check one of the usual Thursday live streams, I actually have a top-down camera. So you can go and check out how that is done. Um, so oh yeah, Michael's still having this the, the bug. So he'd love to know if anybody else in, in the chat is having a problem with subscriptions being unsubscribed. John Pullum, it's so good to see you. It's so good to see you here. So in talking about um, how to get comfortable and the options, so we've just, we went through a little on being able to utilize the record option here in StreamYard, but you can take it a step further. So even if you're not using StreamYard and you're using a different software or you're going live directly through the YouTube app, which you can do that on both desktop and mobile, you can actually go live, but privately, if that makes sense. So when you're choosing to go public, you can have private or unlisted. So you can actually have it so YouTube records it for you. So you can go live for five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever, and still do the same testing. Still sit down, have a look, watch. Now, this is, this is the trick. You need to watch back your video with a critical eye, but not a harsh eye. Does that make sense? When you're learning how to live stream, things aren't going to be perfect. And even when you live stream all the time, sometimes things crash and burn. 
This is the nature of live streaming. It is. It could sometimes be wonderful and sometimes be a dumpster fire. So you need to be able to get ready to move on your feet or just say, sorry guys, this is too stressful or this is too much. I'm going to end the stream. I'm going to see if I can come back, keep an eye out. So you've got options of what you can do because live streaming is live streaming. It is live and stuff sometimes just happens. But when you're watching back your videos, when you're looking at them from the perspective of production, okay, and this is what you need to do. You need to not be like, oh, my hair was a mess or, you know, oh, geez, I should have ironed my shirt better or whatever. Um, this is a linen shirt. I will never win with ironing a linen shirt, okay, and it is hot here today, so I've gone the linen. So sorry if crunchy shirts offend you. <laughs> Not that they do for most people. Some of these things like your hair and your shirt and your makeup, and all, only you notice, okay? Most people in the stream, they're here for the information you're giving. They're here for the entertainment that you're giving. They're not here going, oh my gosh, you know, like I can't believe she's got a Captain America mug back there. Like, ugh, you know, I notice it. Most people probably don't. So I'm just gonna have another look here in the chat. Um, as far as I'm aware, it is a bit of a bug. Um, invalid traffic is not a bug. It is a problem with YouTube and no, it's a different thing altogether. Um, Amazing Yacht Destination says that he's still subscribed to all the channels that I don't watch. <laughs> and I also, yeah, I actually went through over the weekend and had a look at, um, hang on a second and had a look over at, um, at some of the channels I was subscribed to. My husband had made some comment, like I was logged into YouTube on the television in the lounge room. He was like, oh my God, are you really subscribed to over 500 channels? And I'm like, no. And then he's hovered and it was like 506. And I was like, so I went through and did a bit of a cleanup. Um, uh, well, that was interesting. Went live, but the Elgato cams went down thinking on my feet nobody watching yet as I'm too small and look you know what I know some people are like oh it is it is one of these things where it's like I'm too small I'm too small you know but we all start in the same place we really do we all start with zero subscribers on our channel and by different decisions and different plans we grow in different ways and one of the huge advantages of being smaller is that when stuff does crash and burn, there's not thousands of people watching you like deal with it. You are getting the opportunity to learn how to troubleshoot. You're getting the opportunity to learn how to work under pressure, either alone or with very few people. And usually those people are very understanding. Usually, not always. Um, yeah, like StreamYard keeps a stream. This is one of the huge, like, massive advantages of StreamYard. It keeps the stream. So if you've if you've like like seen Nick Nimmin's streams, where he lives, it's it's iffy if the power is gonna work, if the internet's gonna work, all this sort of stuff. So having that sort of um backup net, no what's the word I'm thinking of? You know, when high wires are uh, and there's the net down the bottom. Safety net. Thank you, Chantel. Safety net words. Words are it's, it's quite early in the morning for me on a Monday. Um, <laughs> uh, words not working. So it's it's definitely a great safety net. And it's really easy just to jump back in and keep going. Um, if you can jump into the chat in the meantime, go, hey, guys, technical issue. I'll be back ASAP and let the audience know what you're doing. Otherwise, just focus on what you're doing. Uh, Trish says it's zero degrees Celsius where she is today. Well, it is going to be over 90F here today, um, plus about 60, 70% humidity, which is lower on the humidity scale for us. So that's great. Um, uh, I would definitely go in and like, if you're talking about the invalid traffic bug, Daniel Batal did a live stream earlier today. So definitely go and check that out. It is something I don't really understand myself. So I'm really not the best person to talk to about it. Um, uns oh, Chantel unsubscribed from me first, so it's, it's okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Every winner was once a beginner. I love that. I love that so much. I really do. 
So it, it you know it is it's it's absolutely true and we have to be careful not to compare our beginnings to somebody else's middle because they were a beginner as well you know it's really easy to sit here and you know we a lot of us do watch Nick's live streams or Andrew's live streams or whoever else big creator live streams out there it's really easy to get caught up in the the multi cams and the auto switching and all, all the graphic overlays and all the stuff that happens right it's really easy but if you're not making good content to start with all of that is not going to help as my mum would say you can put lipstick on a pig but it's still a pig you know you've got to get the content right so making something that people want to see even if it's dodgy as production value wise I would say watch your audio if I get to pick one thing to focus on it's always audio people can deal with the dodgy visual as long as the audio is not going weird in their ears um, let me look here. I thought we were doing unsub for unsub. Oh my gosh. Yes. Um, live stream says, uh, you can get multicam in StreamYard by using multiple mobile devices and the invoke guest link and it'll bring in mobile cameras as separate guests. You can. I don't like that. Personally, if I want that, I want picture in pictures. I want everyone, everything overlaying. The other thing is I'm in Australia and every time you add in another camera using that method, it uses more data, more, more bandwidth. In Australia, if you have 40 megabits per second upload, you are considered to have extremely fast upload. It's very rare for anyone to have more than that. It's, it, it can happen, but it's very rare. So the second you start trying to bring in more cameras in that particular method in Australia, so you, and, or anywhere else that has low upload speeds, you are going to come across this problem because you still got to manage the data. So for me, where I am, I run a speed test before every live stream. I actually run multiple speed tests because I'm paranoid. Um, and I will try to send one signal. So if my computer has to do all the work, then my computer has to do all the work. Um, yeah, cats landing on power switches. So this is a story. A couple of weeks ago in our Fiberific live stream, my daughter brought in um, our newish cat. She's, she's still a baby. Um, and she actually stood on this button. I've been rerunning power on my desk. And I didn't realize that this particular power thing was somewhere where the cat could stand on it. Um, and she literally hit one button and it turned off all my lights and my computer. So I had to boot up, turn everything back on and my stream was still there, which was great. Um, uh, yes, you've seen Nick in panic mode before. Absolutely. Trish says we're very humid here. Yep. Um, <laughs> Doug and I goats. Yeah, well, Doug, uh, I did see someone asking earlier where Doug was and if he was okay. Doug's at work. So Doug has a, a, a nine to five, um, a Monday to Friday, nine to five. So he, it's Monday morning here. It's like quarter past nine. So he, he's in the office. Um, Jerry says it's clunky that way too. So we're talking about the bringing in the, the mobile as extra cameras. It works, but it's a lot to manage in real time since his browser on the second device. Oh, absolutely. And for me, I want to make my live streams as less stressful as possible. Uh, and with the craft streams, I need extra cameras because I like to have my face in the corner so I can create connection. Um, Cause I've got one of those faces that's, it's expressive. Like, like I might be able to like, so if someone says something that's really like stupid or dumb or whatever, like really like, oh my God, I could be like, oh, that's really interesting. But my face can't lie. It, it, it's just like, oh, you know, so I have, I, tr I do try to have my face on camera where I can. And then the bigger picture is usually my hands and whatever I'm working on. So yeah, it's definitely, definitely one of the things. It was, it was a catastrophe. Thank you. It was absolutely a catastrophe. Luckily it happened right at the end of a stream, which was good. Um, Andrew says, I'm just happy how fast the live streaming space has evolved. Used to be a lot more complicated to do all the stuff we can do now. Oh my goodness. Absolutely. When I first started live streaming, um, 
I think I worked it out to be over seven years ago now. Um, for me to be able to live stream successfully here seven years ago in Australia, my upload speed was under five megabits per second, um, usually around two to three. So for me to be able to really control that, I had to go into OBS, control bit rates. The learning curve was crazy for doing multicams in OBS seven years ago. It was clunky. It was not fun, whereas now it's so much easier. There's software like StreamYard, which just makes it so simple and just I can focus on you in the community and, and your questions and not be like, is everything working? Is everything working? Now, part of that is because I have gotten used to what I'm streaming and I've gotten comfortable streaming. I need a little drink of water here. So yeah, so I've gotten comfortable streaming. I've taken the time to, whenever there's a new feature that comes up in StreamYard or any of the softwares I'm using, I sit down with it. I run through it all. I try and learn it as much as possible before I use it in a live stream. Every now and again, I'll be like, hey, this is new button, click. Um, <coughs> don't recommend that. I really don't. Definitely not a poker face. I don't have a poker face. I don't play poker. Um, yeah, one thing I don't worry about is trying the live. Yeah, yeah. Um. <coughs> oh, I've got like this dry tickle. I tried really hard to make sure I was well hydrated before the stream, but I have a dry tickle in my throat, so I'm really sorry about that, everybody. Trish says, does my camera need to be plugged into the laptop for lives? So I, um, I do. I actually, I'm one of these strange rangers. And I record every piece of content through my computer. I don't save anything to my cameras. I save it all directly in my computer. So I use StreamYard for, for all my podcasts, recordings. Uh, so And that makes it really easy because then, then my co-host and guests um, can come in really simply. Then, um, or I use Ecamm or I use OBS. I use all these different softwares for different videos. Camtasia is another great one when I'm doing walkthroughs. So having my compute, my camera always plugged into my computer, it's actually never unplugged. My desk setup, which I will pop a photo over on the Chantel Hills Instagram and Twitter. So if you if you don't follow me over there, it's Chantel Hills one, like the numeral one on both of those. Um, and I will pop a photo of what I'm seeing when I'm going live. So my camera is here behind a teleprompter. It's connected directly into my computer. Everything is attached to my computer. I have my audio interface, everything. And it makes it so that when it's time for me to go live or, or make a video, all I have to do is come and sit in this chair and turn things on and I can sit and do it. And that's part of how I've adjusted. That's part of how I've gotten more comfortable with my setup. This is my day-to-day -day working desk. This is where I do everything. It's just right now there's extra lights on and pretty lights in the background. Although I will confess, I do work with those on sometimes. Um, so it's, it's one of these things where I'm comfortable here because I have made the effort to get comfortable here. I do seem so relaxed. Uh, yeah, like before this stream, because it's a new kind of stream, I was a little butterfly tummy. I won't tell a lie, but once I hit go live, I take this deep breath and then get into it. And and with StreamYard, you've got that little second after you hit go live before it actually starts, you know, pushing out to the world, which I love. Um, I should try throat cut. I actually have, like, what's really funny is I actually drink a tea called, it's, it's a tea I can get in Australia. And it's a T2 tea and it's a licorice fruit tea, which is actually one of your ingredients of throat coat. Um, so, but I didn't have any this morning, which was stupid. I know, but yes. Um, I also have a, a vocal spray that I used when I used to sing. So I, I'm used to that as well. Um, I do love to use StreamYard instead of Zoom. I wish they allowed more than 10 people on at once. Yes, I I actually run um, a, a uh, what do I call this? It's a, it's a Zoom group where we actually have a room that we can open at any time so the girls can jump in and chat and talk about stuff. But there's about 20 of us. I mean, we may have anywhere from four to 20 in there at any one time. But I understand why StreamYard don't do it. But at the same time, I'd love that as well, for sure. Um, 
I work on my laptop camera to the laptop to external drive. Uh, yeah, so, so connecting your camera to your laptop, you do need to make sure of a couple of things. So um, unless you're using a webcam, which is super easy, if you're using like a mirrorless or a DSLR or something like that, you need to make sure it has a clean HDMI out and you may have to get a HDMI converter like a cam link. That's a, that's a whole nother conversation, but you can definitely do some Google searching on your, well, you can go to Elgato for the cam link. You can go to Elgato and check to see if your camera model's there to see if you can get that. But there's, there's a whole making sure that it, it is all ready to go. Um, let me have a look. Trish says she thinks she's got me on Twitter. I think, I think you might. I think you might. Um, how did I start streaming? That's a, that's a great question. So many years ago, um, I started streaming on Twitch, of all places, gaming. Um, I wanted to do something a little bit anonymous. I didn't have my face. I just had my gameplay. And um, I, was, I really wanted to test out the limits of my internet at my, at my house. So, you know, I was just like, can, can I even do this here? So I was um, checking out those options and to see how that works. So I started streaming that way. Um, it was fun. I enjoyed it. And then as my fiberific business grew, I realized that I needed to do something to build community. And for me, live streams is all about you. It's all about the people that jump in and chat and talk. And I have a different view of how to treat live streams than a lot of people. And it is probably why my channels grow slower. And I'm not going to lie. It is not the sort of like the best, you know, way to do things. And but it is the way that I found to balance for myself. And for me, my YouTube channels and my YouTube journey is always about you and helping you. And if I create live streams where then I go in and trim the beginnings and ends and cut them down into a beautiful piece of, you know, video on demand, I lose all of the live chat. And for me, that means I've lost the best bit. So I don't do that. I leave my live streams whole because I'm here to answer your questions. And if the chat has disappeared and I've inadvertently replied to somebody, somebody watching a replay is going to be like, what is she talking about? And it's disjointed and it no longer makes sense. Um, and, and I don't like that. I like being part of an online community. I'm obsessed with being parts of online communities and building great, fun, safe places for people to talk about their passions and to get help. And live streams, I think, really just lend themselves to that. So I started live streaming to build that community over for my fiberific business. So at that stage, my channel was like the marketing arm of my business. I was just making videos on the products that I sold um, and how to use them. And it kind of, you know, grew from there. Um, no, let's just say no. <laughs> um... Yeah, honey works. Um, honey water, warm water with honey is something else I use quite a lot. Duck Houston has snuck in. Hello. How are you going? We do. We have to stop talking about him. Absolutely. Um, yes, absolutely. Now, this, is all, this was one of my other points about getting comfortable. For me, this is my comfortable place. I do do not find live streaming or even making video content in public comfortable for me. And this is a personal thing. Different people can handle different things. For me, if I'm live streaming, I really want to be here. I really want to be at my desk in my chair with my microphone and my lights in my place that's safe where my dog is sitting next to my foot. I, I want that. So going live via mobile, if you ever see me go live out of here you know that I'm doing it only for you I'm only doing it for the advantage that it could have for, for you as my community and because I am I'm no good I'm no good <laughs> absolutely the cell service can drop in and out there's so many things that can happen for sure for sure ah uh, Elgato Elgato my brain's like is it Elgato it's Elgato right Elgato I can see my stream deck box that says stream deck, not Elgato. Goodness me. Somebody, somebody can, can type it, right? Um, let me have a dig through. Um, 
lots of chats between each other which is awesome and i love that so much doug's on his mobile so he cannot tag easily because youtube very it's very confusing youtube confuses me with like they put all their new moderating tools on mobile but then you can't tag on mobile and you can tag on desktop except none of the new moderating tools are on anyway that's 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 a soapbox that I'm on. That's a soapbox. Um, what do I think of the announcement from Twitch that they'll allow multi streamings? Example, um, I think that you need to be reading the fine tune of those agreements. Personally, um, it is there's limitations, I believe. So um, I, look, I'm I'm all for multi streaming um, if that's what you want. I personally find that multi streaming segments your audience. So I could be responding to your comment here, Amazing Yacht Destinations, and somebody watching, say, over on Facebook or Twitch, will be like, where is that comment? I can't see that comment. And while the comments are amalgamated here on StreamYard, unless I can bring those comments and put them, say, on here, nobody else can see the amalgamated chat. So I find that multi-streaming, for me, splits the community. And because my goal for streaming is community building, I prefer not to do that. I'm doing some testing over on the Fiberific channel where I'm multi-streaming to my Facebook page as well as to Fiberific uh, on YouTube. And I'm finding that when people find it on YouTube, uh, on Facebook, they actually just jump over to the YouTube chat because that's where everybody's talking. So I think it comes down to what is your goal as a streamer? So is your goal just to stream out to as many people as possible or is your goal to... Um, to build connections with your community. Um, I mean, you can do all of this at the same time, but I, I personally need to be focusing on one step at a time. So that's where I do that. Um, so, yes. So let me, I've got notes here. I'm, tr I'm trying to keep to, to keep to a topic, which I'm really bad at. I've, have you noticed? I'm terrible at keeping to a topic because I love the conversation in chat. I really do. Mobile tagging does need to be a thing. Yeah, I agree. Um, oh, I see. I didn't even know that you used to be able to tag on a mobile. So they took it away from us. They took it away. Um, it would be lovely seeing Australia and all the dangerous beasties. Look, seriously, there's dangerous beasties in my house. So, you know, we get spiders in the house. There's snakes in the yard. I, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm still not doing it every now and again I'll go live on Instagram and if I do that I tend to go and sit up in the back corner of my yard up there and sit on a, in the shade and and have a cold drink and and go that way um so you might you might see something that way um uh what about the chat ninja that will show where the chat comes from for multi-stream chat ninja is an OBS plugin is that correct um not using OBS, so I don't have access to the Chat Ninja. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can use Chat Ninja in StreamYard. I have no idea. Um, in StreamYard, like when I'm looking at the chat, it actually has the icon. So if I'm multi-streaming, it will show um, all of the locations of the different people. Oh, it's a, it's a Chrome extension. Okay. Um, I've never used it. I, I personally... Um, as, as I said, for me personally, I prefer to stream in one location and focus on one audience because the other thing is if I say something that's allowable on YouTube but is not allowable on Twitch, what happens then? If, if I'm using music that I've got a license for on, on YouTube but not on Twitch or Facebook, what happens then? So for me, I like to be able to focus my energies. And if I was, if I was going to be the person who wanted to have all of these different things, I would set up a streaming calendar where I'm streaming on Twitch at this time and Facebook on this time and you know I, I would tend to go that way more but that's a personal thing um, and you get to decide these things you get to choose it's your channel and it's your audience you get to decide which way you go um, so yeah you're still confused about how to get started streaming okay so is it the the technology of getting started streaming, the ideas of what to talk about while getting started streaming, or the physical take a deep breath and go. Because there's a few different aspects to getting started to streaming. I'd love to cover the one that you really need help with. Um, 
So where is your laptop and your camera and where are you reading chat? Okay. So I'm currently on a, um, on a, on a Mac mini, so not on a laptop. Um, I usually stream on a laptop, but I also ha like lots. I'm blind, not blind. Uh, I'm old. And so therefore I've got reading glasses. I like to work off a secondary monitor. So I have a secondary monitor right here that I can see right there. I, I'm actually really lucky. I've got it on an articulating arm so it can actually bend backwards, which because I wear glasses is fantastic. So I don't get the monitor glare into my glasses. Um, my camera is directly above it. Um, and on a tripod just behind my desk because I don't have one of the new amazing Elgato um, teleprompters. I've got an older teleprompter that's so big and clunky and heavy it had it could not take my, my desk mount couldn't take the weight I had to put it on its own heavy duty tripod. So I've had to pull my desk forward and put it actually on the floor on the other side of the desk. Um, so that's, that's how I, and my chat, I'm reading directly from StreamYard. So I do have another monitor here. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> I, I just got a, a, a thing here. It's like, shut up, you're a baby. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a second, <laughs> but no, no, I, I get it. You, you're like, you're young. No, I'm, I'm. Uh, you're not old compared to me at 61. Okay, well, you know, I'm late 40s. So, and my vision is recently starting to go. So I'm feeling my age. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I allowed the shut up, you're a baby because YouTube automatically flagged that. But I do have a secondary screen where I have the YouTube window open as well. So because I wasn't sure if I would have any moderators in t for today's chat, I wanted to make sure that I could moderate. So I don't just ever have just StreamYard or just Ecamm open. I always have YouTube open as well. I want to be able to see if YouTube's getting a good connection. I want to be able to see the actual chat that's happening and be able to moderate there. I think it's partly because I am a control freak moderator. Um, you don't have to do that. You just don't. Um, let's have a look here. Oh, it was all of the above. It's mainly the equipment that you need. Okay, so to go live, minimum basics, mobile phone with an internet connection. It has an audio, it has the option for an audio pickup, it has a camera, it's small, it's tiny. I personally don't like to do it because I can't read the chat because it's so small. <laughs> Like, and being able to have it far enough to get my big head into it, you know, like uh, it, it doesn't work for me, but that is your bare minimum. That's what you need. Now, if you want to take the next step up from that, I would suggest a laptop with a webcam and pop in like a, a USB mic into an, or a, either a USB mic or um, a, a Boya BYM1 lav mic into your little 3.5 millimeter jack um, and then you've got a little bit of the next level audio rather than your laptop audio because usually laptop audio is pretty yeah. so that they would be my suggestions for your first lots of um, technology is either directly to mobile to test it out to see how you feel otherwise grab a laptop or or, or your desktop or whatever and then um, and then have a go and and test it out you don't have to go live straight away. You can hit record. You can go live privately. There's lots of options for you to test it out and see if you're comfortable to see if you like, like, do I need to move over here more? Do I need to get close to the microphone? Do I need to pull it in? Like, is the microphone blocking something that I want seen? You know, like all these things that sometimes while you're streaming and focusing on the camera, you may not quite notice in the framing. So if you're if you're looking like for me right right now, like if I want to look at the frame, so I'm going to look down here. I'm like, okay, those cups could move over. It looks weird up there with just the little tripod legs because it's cut off at the top there. There's actually a camera on that, you know, all these things. And you could you can definitely go in and look at that. See, I need to, um, and and you can test these things out. So sometimes just sitting down and giving it a go, you know, you can totally just try it without actually going live, without putting yourself out there for anybody else to comment upon. You can have a look yourself. But one thing I will say, we are our own harshest critics. Just about everybody I know, we are our own harshest critics. 
So when you are looking at your recorded content, please be kind to yourself and look at it from a production value. Don't look at it as a personal attack. Look at it like, do I need to move a light? Do I need to sit somewhere different? Do I need to move something out of the background? Do I need to light myself more evenly? Things like that should be on your mind, not personal image. Like, unless you've got like a crusty hanging off your face or there's splodge on your shirt, you know, like of course, <laughs> tidy, tidy. But other than that, don't go there. Um, um, has to be face down, see my problem. So this is the advantage of doing it on your, um, on your laptop or on an iPad. What you could be doing is actually click record or click go live. You can log into your own Facebook account, bring it up on another screen. So you can have the face down of your phone of what you're using and you can see that. But then you can be looking at the other screen and working out, okay, do I need to move? Do I need to create a barrier? For me, one of the things that I did to help with my hands down shots and to, to make them square and even was I've actually got a... Um, a desk mat um so like a like a big it's, it's a big you know uh, hang on i'll drop some things down here it's a big you know big desk mat and i make sure that when i set up my camera that that's what's visible now if you can't see your image because you're using your phone for everything you do need to grab either a laptop or a computer and go in and look at the stream. So when you're streaming privately, you can go and look at your own stream if, as long as you're logged in. So you could have that on a laptop and move that around and then put some markings on your table to help you line it up to make it square if that's what you need. Um, yeah, oh, absolutely. Or an iPad, for sure. A new iPad's iOS 7, uh, 17, you can add an external webcam with a hub. Absolutely you can. I know Doug was testing that out and so was Justin Brown. Um, I've got an iPad, but I couldn't make it work. I think my hubs are dodgy, but every time um, you can totally try these things out and test them for yourself for sure. Um, every time I see the, the live, oops, that took a second. Every time I see the live button in the studio, I think, should I? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think you should. Michael, you need to go back and check out my first Fibrific live streams. That's what I would say. They were a dog's breakfast. Honestly, I was freaking out. I didn't know what was working. And then you will see that me streaming hundreds of times, nearly thousands of times, is different from me streaming at the start. Let's just go with that. Um, And I agree with Andrew. It takes time. And the more you show up, the better you get. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, maybe he didn't know it was there. So, yeah. Um, do channels pick the moderators or the community? Is the permissions at channel level or YouTube? You, as the streamer, you pick your moderators. So what you can do is you can, right now in the chat, when I tap on someone's name, I've got a three dot option and I can make, add them as a moderator. So if you have somebody in your community that you trust, this is a trust issue. You can make them a moderator. Having a moderator can, it can absolutely make or break a live stream having the right or wrong moderator. Moderators can change the tone of the chat. They can take over, they can railroad, they can delete comments that you have no problems with. They can allow comments that you have problems with. You know, you need to be able to trust that your moderator is going to have your channel and your community at, um, for their, for, for their, their, your channel and your community's best interests at heart, not their own personal chips on their shoulders. Every now and again, I get a bit spicy and I'm like, I want to delete this thing, but I'm like, oh, it's not my channel. I can't, you know, um, but you absolutely get to create your own moderators and your own managing moderators. You get to do it all yourself and you get to unmoderate them if they are not up to the standard that you want. 
but I would highly suggest that if you do get moderators, make sure that you create a place where you can chat with your moderator, if it's a Facebook group or a Discord or something. Put in um, a, a, a list, a Google document list of allowable, um, of allowable links that they're allowed to share. Um, and, you know, your pet peeves. For me, I really hate when people go overboard with caps lock because I don't like being yelled at and my brain instantly goes to caps equals yelling. So, um, you know, and over emojis and things like that. So think about the things that bother you and that you don't want to appear in a chat and list them out as guidelines. Like I've got a list of chat rules there in the description if you want to check that out. So click more and you can see what my chat rules are. My moderators know those chat rules mostly. I don't know if Andrew does. Um, and maybe Andrew needs to have a recap on the, no. <laughs> But yeah, so you can totally go in and you can you have to train your moderators to set the tone. Um, or you, you can hire moderators if that's what you want to do, but you still have to tell them what you want. So um, let me have a look here. Um, yeah, Trish, if you don't have an iPad, you might have some other tablet. You can't plug in an additional camera to that, but you know, you might be able to. Um, <laughs> uh, this is funny um, for me if someone doesn't hydrate I get worried anyway please hydrate 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 um, I've been hydrating and I was well hydrated before the stream started as well I try to make sure that in the lead up like in the morning before a stream or in the afternoon I make sure I'm well hydrated in the lead up because it's all about vocal cord care and just drinking during the stream actually doesn't help with that um, if you have neglected it all day. So make sure you're keeping hydrated for the entire day, not just the bit of the stream. Um, uh, let me look here. So far, I've only, come on. So far, I only watched StreamYard, so never played with the YouTube back end on my live tab. I would absolutely go in and check it out. The more that you know, the more that you understand, the, the, the more information that you have, the easier it is for you to make decisions. You don't need a moderator to start. You don't. Um, making sure that I'm having problems with my comments taking a little while to come up. Is there an, Andrew, is there an option in StreamYard that I need to click that brings my, my things straight up? Because they're starting to fade in and fade out now rather than just be like, boof. Um, is that a new thing? I don't know. Anyway, um, you don't need a moderator to start, especially if you're small and you have a small audience. The chances of scammers and spammers is low. If you're really concerned, make your mod, make your stream subscriber mode only. Explain, um, explain to your community and in the video, like, hey, if you can't chat, it's because I'm here on my own and I just wanted it to be for the subscribers. So please subscribe. You'll be able to chat in a minute, you know, and 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 just go through that way, and that that helps. People who are subscribed are less likely to be trolly, except for the, uh, you know, some. Andrew. <laughs> um, so, you know, and if they're really, really bad, make them a moderator because, you know, no. <laughs> some people need to do that. Um, <sighs> All righty. Yeah, John, that doesn't sound awesome. That does not sound awesome. Um Oh, you don't know. Andrew says I just optimize the YouTube site. Okay, that's all right. So when it comes to like, is there a is there a reason why they're they're fading in and out? Um, the comments. So, um, uh, what about bathroom breaks? Okay, so um, there are. Oh, see, I clicked it twice because it didn't come up. This is bothering me. This better not be a new feature. Where is it? I've clicked it. Show. Come on. There we go. Um, bathroom breaks, human necessities, instances of crazy time. I recommend bringing in a Be Right Back screen. It doesn't have to have audio. Having a little bit of audio behind it is great. But absolutely set up a Be Right Back screen. I'm just seeing if I've got one in here. On one of my other brands, I might. I can't change my brand. So, um you know, have a be right back stream. Actually, it could be because I've set it to this dumb 
dark mode thing. There we go. Um, I know Fiberific has a be right back screen. So under my, I'm just going to press it briefly. Okay. And, and so I have this. So I have that there for um, being able to, oh, I've, I've messed everything up. Let me, where's my background? Where's my pink background? Oh, there it is, it's back. So, you know, having having something there ready to just change onto, I, for me, I have it in the video clip section and just being able to just change onto it so that you can just duck off. Sometimes my dog goes crazy and I, he won't stop barking, so I've got to run out and check on him because it could be someone there. Um, you know, you've got to you've got to you've got to think of the situations. So if you're a person that can't stream for three hours without a break, don't stream for three hours. Stream for an hour. There's no rules that says your stream has to be 11 billion hours long. You get to choose. Your stream can be 30 minutes. Your stream could be five minutes. It's entirely up to you. Um, but having some things there for in case of emergencies is a really great option. If you if you don't want to make your own Be Right Back streams, I highly recommend Tuber Tools. Um, and they've got some great Be Right Back screens over there that you can grab. Um, oh, very funny, John. That's very clever. That's very clever indeed. Um, let me look here. I'm just checking. Yeah, um, that's right. Be right backs might stand for bio breaks, anything. It could be anything. Um, so, oh yeah, like I've, I've done streams that were eight hours long. Um, and I, what is going on with my comments? Wow. They're taking a really long time to show up. I'm not sure what's going on there. I'll have to have a look. So, um, so you need to, to, to set place. Originally I was, I, once a year I do this, this gig where I run live streams on a channel and originally it was um, six hours a day for four days and I would have different guests every 15 minutes. Now we run it, um, uh, I think it's eight hours for two days and there's actually like an hour in the middle where somebody else is running a round table chat so I can go off and I can have some lunch and I can, you know, do the things I need to do. Planning out the, sh the run of show even just something as simple as just a few notes to help you keep on point, but also planning in case the worst thing happens. So in case the postman turns up and I have to sign for something, in case my house sets on fire and I need a minute to go and put it out before I come back, have these things set up in place. And for me, it is that safety net again. I know that that it's not on on this brand but on another brand i have the option for a be right back screen which i'm just going to write myself a note add a be right back screen to this brand um so you know it can, you can make it so that you can prepare for the eventualities and that helps me to be comfortable knowing that if i need to run i can the other thing is if it's an actual emergency you just drop everything and go and check it don't end your stream don't be like oh thanks for coming like you can hear sirens like oh bye you can actually run and check because this is real life and life comes before live streams um let me think um <laughs> yeah so we now know based on um on the 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 discussion over on the Streamyard channel um, during the the um, the celebration stream. Wow, I clicked. I've clicked the, the next comment. It says hide, but I've still got Andrew's comment up. I do not know what's going on here. Anyway, so I'm reading. Ah, oh, and then it, my impatience. I've sent it away. Um, I have wheels. I have the rollerblade wheels. I'm second generation for the rollerblade wheels. So 
Doug learnt from Nick and then Doug told me. So now all our office chairs in our house have rollerblade wheels. Um, so yeah, definitely. Um, John says, I did over a hundred live streams during the quarantine and had a couple of guests get up and leave for bathroom breaks during the show. When you got to go, you got to go. Absolutely. Um, what other scenes would you suggest other than BRB from Amazing Yacht Destinations? So definitely a BRB. Um, if you've got any, like for me, I, I want to talk. Okay. So I tend to not have too many, too many preset scenes, at least on, on StreamYard. So it is definitely, um, how you think about it. So like for Nick, he will throw in a, a, like a, the coffee song or something like that. So some, some sort of video that just takes, will take the front for just a minute. So generally something that is relevant for your audience, relevant to your stream would be super helpful. Being cautious and mindful that you need to have the copyright to any audio and any visual that you are using. So, um, but yeah, I definitely think if you're a countdown timer person, a countdown timer, um, I'm not a countdown timer person. Um, then uh, a be right back screen, maybe a startup screen. So, so instead of like a countdown timer, um, having like a little pre-roll video that starts when you start, that just sort of sets the tone and lets everyone know that you're going to be live in like, you know, the people that are there get used to the fact that it only runs for 30 seconds or a minute. So instead of a countdown timer, just run like this little 30 second clip. And again, at the end, have it set up so that it's where you would put your, um, any end cards that you want to set up. So you could totally have that. Um, I used to do that. I have not been doing that for a while in my live streams. I probably should. Um, it's a best practice. So you could have a, a, a like a, a scene set up where it moves you to sort of one side and in, in the side there, it could be just a colored screen that might look a bit weird during the very end of your live stream. But then when, um, when you go into your live stream later, you can put your end screen elements in it. So I would probably set those things up. Um, oh, Andrew says you can play a, you can play a mini video. Trish loves the coffee song. Um, there are times we'd run a video of a guest or something. We'd know how long it was and how much time we had. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to drop some stuff out here and just see if it's the music or something like that. That's, that's slowing everything down. Um, because the comments are very slow to be added and taken from the stream. So I'm going to see if, if I've got StreamYard doing too many things and if that's the problem, uh, would running commercials be ideal? If, if you are having paid commercials as in you've been paid to run them. So like little stinger inserts, absolutely. Um, embedded commercials can totally work. Um, if that's something that you want to do. So you could absolutely upload those into StreamYard as a video and run those little 30 second commercials here and there. Um, I'm, okay. So it wasn't the music that did it. So I'm going to see if it's the, the video background and see if that's what's doing it. Um, so let's bring that back up. Show. Trish says, I'm not sure how I feel about start screens. If you don't like start screens, don't do a start screen. It's your live stream. You get to decide. This is your interaction with your community and your audience. You get to, to decide the run of show. Um, it's also good to go full screen on the guest or yourself during the show. It gives the person not on a not on the screen, a chance to take a drink, blow their nose. Absolutely. If you are, um, if you are having a guest, uh, ask a leading question, make them full screen, grab your tissue. Don't run off screen. If they're not aware that you've got to run away. Um, so unless you say at the start, look, Hey, can you, if I put you full screen, I might just have to duck out for a second. Can you carry it? Um, just until you see my face pop back in. Um, so if you haven't warned them, don't run away, but you can totally have a drink. You can totally like, okay. And then lean back in and get back into it for sure. Um, 
Andrew says you can run ads, run ads on the YouTube back end, but keep in mind that if they have premium, they will still see the screen or they will skip in five seconds. Yeah. Um, so I think Michael was thinking more of the idea of running a commercial built in. So having it as a video to just play where he sits here and waits for it to finish and then comes back in. But yes, um, in, in, the YouTube back end, you can actually add in ads as you go during your live stream. But there's a lot of things to be mindful of. So the ad may not run for a start. YouTube may decide that that particular audience member doesn't need an ad because they got one here earlier. The ad doesn't always get placed. So if it does get placed, that'll be the spot it's put in but it may not serve an ad. So for a start, so it may just be a blank screen. Second, if they do have premium, again, they won't get served the ad, so they will have a blank screen. And thirdly, if you've allowed 30 seconds for a YouTube ad and they've skipped it at five, there's 25 seconds of blank screen. So it's all about um, having a look at that. Um, I don't know what's going on with the comments. Um, Trish says, I've actually left live because I thought the stream was over. So as in someone had a, a video up and you assumed the, screen, the stream was done, That's that um, to me says that the streamer didn't prepare you. So that's the other thing, being able to go, hey, this video, um, I've, I'm going to put up this video. It only lasts for a minute or two and I'll be right back after it. Um, YouTube does show different ads to people, so it might be longer or less for some. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, John, that's terrible. Um, yeah, I personally have premium. I think it was the best thing I ever did. And one of the things I'm loving about premium right now is that, um, I'm getting, cause I have YouTube music. I, I am getting to see, um, podcasts in YouTube music. So where people are using the podcast tab um, on their YouTube channels, those podcasts are coming over to YouTube music, which I'm loving. Oh dear. Oh dear. I'm going to have a little sip of my water. If anyone is here, hyd anyone here needs to hydrate, hydrate, please. Andrew gets concerned. Okay. All right. So so far we have covered streaming in a safe space. So for me, this is my safe space. So you need to find your safe space. Um, so you need to find a, a, a spot that's comfortable for you, that you feel comfortable going live in, that you can, if you need to light or set your camera gear up or whatever it is that you want to do, make sure it's somewhere that's not just safe as in emotionally safe, but physically safe as well. So for me, I don't want to be sitting up at the dining table because next to the dining table is basically the hallway from the kitchen to the living room. So if I've got a camera there, the chances are someone's going to trip over a tripod. So, and either knock the tripod for a six and smash the camera, which totally happened the other week. I knocked over my own tripod that was sitting here. I didn't realize it was behind me. I went back and hit it with a chair smash the lens luckily not the camera just the lens but these things happen um yeah that's right michael after these messages we'll be right back absolutely set the expectation in your stream so which is why you know my beat right back screen actually has brb on it because sometimes i need to just throw that up there without any warning like that the emergency has happened click off um so the actual screen says i'll be right back as well um, I was wondering where the podcasts were. Yeah, yeah. So it was rolling out in the US. The podcast have uh, the podcasts have been showing up in YouTube Music basically since day dot, but it's now rolling out internationally. I know for sure it's happening in Australia and New Zealand. I've 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 seen screenshots of it. I'm not sure about other countries. Um, LHM Studios, great to see you. Oh, yeah, see, there we go. I had a four-year-old run through the room, catch the tripod, smash my Sony camera and shattered the lens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I'm saying a safe space, I, I, while I, I definitely mean emotionally safe, somewhere where you're comfortable, I also mean as in a little bit out of the way or, or you know, safe for your equipment and gear that won't be trashed by pets, family, friends in a, or, or your location is not public. Uh, where someone can just 
walk away with your camera while you are tethered to a microphone. But absolutely. Um, let's have a look here. <laughs> oh, emotionally safe. Cancel safe order on Amazon. Did you use my affiliate link for Amazon? Because th if that's the case, you don't need to cancel. I'm sure you could use the safe for something else. Oh, dear. Oh, okay. Something funny. You guys know how we've been playing the whole. Oh, can you check my link for my buy me a coffee in the description? I'm not sure if it's working. Well, I actually legit had put a new link into one of my live streams and I wasn't sure if it worked. And the second I said it, I was just like, oh my gosh, they're going to think I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, it truly worked. And lots of people went and checked the link for me but, and the link worked. So phew, luckily, but yeah, it's um, definitely, you know, yeah. Um, Oh, so I watched a show about murder. The guy's alibi was that he was on a live stream, but he wasn't. The live was pre-recorded and said something like, he can't see the chat. Right. Okay. Because on StreamYard, you can upload the video and actually send that to, um, and you can send that to YouTube as a live stream, but it's pre-recorded. Oh my gosh. Wow. I love that the murder shows are catching up with the technology. Excuse me. Does my QR code work? Yes, that is that is a one, isn't it? I I've turned everything off, and the the comments are still just that's upsetting. I'm wondering if it's just me or if it's if it's doing the same thing for you. Um. So I checked the like button. It works too. The like button is below. And if you're enjoying this stream, like the stream. Thank you, Andrew. That's, that's wonderful. That's a great way to mention the like button. <laughs> so, oh, I'm going to tell you something right now. I've just double checked. And the issue is in my StreamYard window. It's not with the live stream. The comments are coming straight up for you guys. They're not working on my stream. Okay, that's good to know. So when I click hide, it just hides it and it, it's gone. And whereas for me, it's still like fading out so slowly. It's still on my screen now. It's still there. Um, so yeah, did they buy me a coffee? Yes, they did. There are a few coffees that were bought and I very much appreciated all of those coffees. So yes, um, <laughs> it totally works. It totally works. Oh, you asked me to take action. Not that action. Goodness, no. That's the opposite action that what I want. So if you've already subscribed to this channel, remember to click the like button that's right near it. Absolutely. Um, Trish says, I always hit the like button. I love to press the buttons. Oh, it worked for you. That's excellent. I'm glad to hear that LHM. So glad to hear that. So, oh man, Doug, you're a bad influence. You remember how we were talking about when mods go bad? Um, this is an example live, a live example of when the mods run rogue. Actually, you know, this isn't new. This isn't new. We used to, last year we were doing a lot of really great interviews, we being me. I was doing a lot of really great interviews with some fantastic creators and, and the mods would come in and just, they create havoc. It was so much fun though, because the mods know me, they know I take it as a joke. If, if you were doing this stuff and the streamer didn't know how to take a joke and they were taking this seriously, then it could be bad. But the mods, these mods, these guys, they know me. They know me. They know what I find funny. Um, I have a, 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 I would say a healthy sense of humor. Um, yeah. Andrew knows better than to follow me. No, Andrew, Andrew will follow you. Andrew will follow you. Um, mostly. Mostly. Unless you said something bad about Disney, then I, I think Andrew would be like square up. Um, let me, let me have a look here. I've got more comments coming. I'm still trying to figure out 
how to bring a drone in as a cam during a live stream. That's a really interesting one. Be can you bring your drone footage into your laptop? Just usually. Um, because an option would be to bring it in as a screen share. If, if that's, I mean, I really don't know, like, is, I'm not sure how it's connecting. I don't know much about drones at all, but that would be, if you can see your, your drone footage on your screen at all, then the screen share could work. Um, the only way to really do it is to test it out. Take your laptop outside, throw a drone up in the air, connect it to, and see if you can get the signal to come through. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I I see. My mum always used to do the whole. Would would you if such and such jumped off a bridge, you'd follow them, and I'd be like, uh, no, I wouldn't. There's limits, but everything else they're doing totally fun. Okay. Yeah, a drone's still a camera. It is technically still a camera, but the connections are different. So yeah. Alrighty. So we've we've had some we've had some great chats about some of the options for creating a safe place, utilizing tools like StreamYard where you can just hit record and then you can rewatch your recordings and then delete it once you're happy, once you've reset up your room. The other advantage with StreamYard is once you've set your your scene up, you can you can have it there for next time. So basically, I just need to come in. I need to rejig my camera because I, I do zoom in this camera a little bit. So I need to make sure the camera is where I want it. But everything else is just ready to rock and roll. Um, oh, there you go. Our live stream consultants has said here, if you're using a DJI product, a DJI product, um, there are settings that can do it. There you go. That's awesome. Depends on the functionality of the drone, controller, etc. I'd be surprised if it didn't have a live stream mode. Yeah. Absolutely. So it, it's going to depend on the technology you're using as well. But totally, totally worth checking out and seeing how that works. Um, I'm finding the comments thing very distracting. So that's why, because I've got the, the live stream happening over here. So I can see that the comments gone over there, but it's still sitting here. Um, Trish says that I'm face down and I'm okay doing it that way. Yeah. Like, and this is the thing you need to find a way that makes you happy for your live streams. Um, a way that you can, for me, it's all about what's going to stop me. What is going to stop me from going live what is going to stop me from recording a video and i found that over the years one of my big stop points was having to set everything up and i'm very lucky in the fact that that i do have a desk dedicated for my work and there is a door so it's not out in the middle of the house which is great so i have a very it's a very small room this is um 2.4 by 2.6 meters i i don't know that in feet it's a very small room and I have got free reign in this room. So one wall is all my craft stuff. Um, like that's off camera because that is messy. And then this section here where my desk is, what you can see. So I've got a 1.8 meter desk and that section and behind it is always like this. Is always ready to either record for a video or go live for a live stream so if somebody says hey can you jump on a call I can jump on a call um, I don't have to go oh just let me set everything up I might be like can you give me a minute and that usually means I need to get out of a daggy t-shirt um, and put on something you know less that, that I don't like <laughs> um, Andrew says that's about 86 square feet in freedom metrics that sounds, that sounds really large when you say 86 square feet. Um, for me, that's less than nine square meters. So yeah. <laughs> um, let me look here. I'm just checking the chat here. Fear will stop me. 
you know what? Fear stops me every now and again. I have a, I have weeks where I am not good and I don't record videos, but I still go live because over in my live stream community of, on Fiberific, that is a happy place for me. So even if I'm feeling not the best for me, I can live stream over there. There is no judgment. And I've created that over the years that the expectations have been set. So it's all about what you build and how you build it. Um, I, Andrew knows, I am very passionate about community. And for me, there are a lot of things that I will do for the community that I won't do for myself. I will put myself like, I will may not be in the frame of mind to do something for myself, but if somebody in the community needed me to do something, I would be in there. Like, so, so I'm in a Facebook group where somebody needed help walking through a particular thing. I jumped on and did a little Camtasia video showing them how to do it. I was not in the frame of mind to create a full tutorial using Camtasia for myself, and my own channel, but this person needed my help. So I instantly did it. So for me, that's how my brain works. And you need to look at what works for you, what can motivate you um, and what can get you over the fear sort of hump. Um, sometimes the fear is the unknown. Sometimes not knowing if it's going to work, not knowing if anyone's going to show up, not knowing if the technology is going to work. Those things can only be resolved if you hit go live. Even if it's record. And that's, that's what you just do. You have to just jump in with both feet and give it a go. The worst case scenario is that it's glitchy and then you remove it. That's your worst case scenario. Your best case scenario is that, that even you can just help one person. Even if it's just a conversation that you're having with them, like they're in the chat and it's, even just that little conversation, that could be the only communication that person has with a human that day. You don't know what's going on in their life. And that, that's how I think about it. So I try not to let the fear stop me from live streaming. The fear stopped me on this channel entirely for six months. I went down the whole, oh my God, what can I possibly teach people that they're not learning from somewhere else? And then I realized, well, I speak differently. I have different motivations and I have different end goals to some people. So maybe I need to just suck it up, pull on my big girl pants and do this. So for me, having you guys here helps me, which feels really selfish. <laughs> so thank you for, for jumping in and letting me help you. And then you're helping me. Um, Let's have a look. Uh, Trish says, I will watch Five Riffic. Thank you, Trish. Trish, if you're crafting or you're doing handy hands down shots, that's a really great place to go and check out those sorts of things live in action. I do that every, every week. Um, for me, it's 10 till 12 on a Thursday. So if you're in another time zone, it'll be a Wednesday night. It's always scheduled the day before so you can check it out. Punch fear in the face. I love that dog. Just, just straight up punch fear in the face. Um, Andrew says you also offer a unique point of view, um, that's worth sharing. Thank you. Preaching to the choir. Absolutely. I do feel like I'm preaching to the choir. Absolutely. Thank you, Doug. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, oh, thank you. Amazing at destinations. I very much appreciate that. There is only one Chantel Hills. Yes, there is. And that's probably a lucky thing because I'm a bit of a strange ranger. Um, so, yeah. Uh, each one of us has a huge, uh, each one of us has a different sphere of influence. So go live. Yes, absolutely. We all have our own thing that we, we got in our lives. Like we have, we all have our own past lives. Like for me, I have a history of working in IT. I have a history of working in accounting. I have a history of being a cake decorator. I have a history of being a, a lighting engineer for um, plays and musicals. You know, like all these different things. 
have all kind of culminated into my life, my YouTube channels and therefore my live streams. So my life's experiences comes in to play. Um, Doug, Doug, Doug does choose violence sometimes. Uh, I haven't seen it. I've heard it. But yes. Oh, plus I have a great Aussie accent. I mean, there's always that, right? There's always the Aussie accent. Um, it can be quite disarming for some people. Some people can be quite rude about it in the chat. I've noticed I, I did have to add some um, block words to my chat about how people were describing my accent. So yeah, it is, it's definitely, um, it's definitely uh, an interesting, an interesting bonus. It's an interesting bonus. Let's go with that. Uh, Got to be a bit violent towards things that come along and get in our face. Yes, we, we just have to, you know, sometimes we really do just to have to stand up for what we believe in. And sometimes we have to stand up to ourselves for what we believe in. And for me, the biggest fear of live streaming is usually yourself. That yourself is usually the biggest hurdle. So that is a hard one. I'm, I'm not repeating that one because that will be the soundbite. Michael Sohovsky said, says, did you say IT? Yes, I did. Many years. I worked for Wang Computers. And then when they changed over to Detronics, I worked for them. Um, Leanne absolutely is one of our amazing moderators over on the Fiberific channel. And we do have a lot of fun. There is a lot of shenanigans. There's a lot of laughing. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah. It is. It's definitely. Um, your accent is upbeat and jolly. Oh, okay, cool. I like that. Um, did Doug get into bar fights at Vid Summit? Look, if he did, there's no video footage of it yet. I haven't seen it. If anyone's got any, I'd love to see it. We'll see you later, Leanne. Have an awesome day. Um, <laughs> Doug says, I hope not. That's funny. That's funny. Okay. Do you guys in the chat have any other questions for me? Um, I would love to be able to help and answer your specific questions if I possibly can. Uh, I don't have all the answers and I quite often just have my opinions. So, you know, I'm, I do have opinions. They're, some of them are quite, um, <laughs> I've learned over the years. Let's have a look. If it's not on camera, it didn't happen. Marcus, that is so true. That is so true. It, that is, that is, see, there you go. Doug, Marcus has come to save the day. If it didn't happen, it didn't happen. Yes, not shenanigans. Oh, yes, we, we, we totally get up to shenanigans at Fiverrific. It happens all the time. Accents are interesting. When I was in Australia was the first time I ever heard you have an amazing accent. So this is the thing. If you are in the country that speaks with that accent all the time, nobody hears it. You don't hear an accent. You don't realize you have one. It's not until you go somewhere else and they're like, wait a second. So yeah, um, it's definitely, definitely fun. Wait till the drone community, tight knit and diverse. Uh, wait to see. Okay, wait to see the drone community. Yes, Doug, it's last call for sure. So get your last questions in. Uh, in about not long after this, this live is over. The Streamyard has their weekly town hall, so I want to be able to, you know, jump up and have a stretch before I start modding over there. Trish says. This was great. It was more than I expected. Thank you. Well, I am glad that you enjoyed your time here, Trish. Uh, Trish, I can't speak anymore. Words are no longer happening. Um, what happens in Vegas stays on YouTube. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah, that's very good. Oh, dear. I love it. I love it. Okay. Well, if that is, if that is that, 
I will see you all next time, uh, next week, same bat time, same bat station. Um, I am testing out this time zone to see how it works for a few of you. Um, it also is actually a really great start to my week for me, starting with an action rather than checking emails, which I, that's what I've done Monday mornings for the last seven years is checking emails on a Monday morning. Um, so having my first Monday morning action to be hanging out with you and actually doing something, uh, it starts my week with like buoyancy. It's great. Um, Amazing Yacht Destination says, I pick up accents quickly and when I travel a lot, people in my home country would ask where I come from as I can't place my accent. <laughs> oh my gosh. I have to be really careful that, because my brain automatically does the same thing and I have to be careful that people aren't insulted because I will start, it's just an automatic thing. I try not to do it. But yeah, it, my accent changes. Uh, Chantel, will you go live twice a week in the future? At this stage, no. It's not on the cards. Um, we'll see how the time zones go. Maybe down the track, a second live stream would work. I am the ultimate goal at the moment is a live stream and a, um, and a piece of video content each week on this channel. So two pieces of content a live stream and something else. Um, we, we might have a play with this, with this time zone. At the end of the day, I need it to be a time that I can comfortably and do for my own brain. I don't want to be getting up at four in the morning or anything silly like that to be doing these live streams. So um, it needs to work on an Australian time zone and on a time zone when my family aren't crashing around. So I've got some limitations here I'm working around. So we'll see. We'll see. I mean, if something super special happens, then maybe. Um, and sometimes I'm a guest on other channels. So, you know, that happens as well. Um, it's like Sunday night for Trish. Okay. It is. It is. All righty. We will, I will, we, I will see you all here next week. Have an awesome Sunday night or Monday morning. Start to your week. And um, don't be afraid to just click record or Go live privately for your first live. It does, it'll take out the fear and it'll get you prepared. So enjoy your live streaming journeys and I will catch you next time. Bye now. My end stream button is not ending the stream. <laughs>